Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Bittner from Triple Helix Corporation, and welcome to our Helix Insider podcast. Uh, today, I'm joined in studio with my developer, Pedro Lopez, and my director of marketing, Lauren Gully. Hello, everybody. Today, we wanted to talk about AI. Um, it's a very hot topic on everyone's plate, and uh, my team here has been doing quite a bit of work in the AI space, and I uh, want to give a chance for them to talk a little bit more about AI, and hopefully we can share some of our insights with you. So uh, what I'd like to do, Pedro, let's start with you. Um, let's understand AI. What are some of the tools and the platforms that are popular in the AI space right now? So right now you have you know, all the LLMs, the uh, language models uh, like ChatGPT, uh, Bard from Google. Uh, and you know, those are the most popular ones uh, right now, but there is a plethora of you know, different LLMs and things that are popping up all the time. Uh, there's Yama as well from, from Facebook uh, that is having a huge impact in the uh, open source community right now that kind of allowed to vend off a bunch of different uh, types of, of, you know, Git ripples that allow people to do amazing things with it right now. So, but th those are essentially the most popular things right now. And obviously, um, after ChatGPT opened their API, um, it allowed for a lot of developers to create apps that you know improve and automate things in all sorts of ways as well. Yeah, let's talk about that because I mean these tools are not that you know great if they don't actually do something for us. So, like, how do they improve productivity, Lauren? How does that work for you? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of just touching back on what Pedro said for a minute, you know, chat GPT was kind of the main powerhouse that emerged in the AI space initially. And when they launched, it kind of opened the door for all of these other developers to go in and start producing different applications, kind of to mimic chat GPT, but also to really streamline that AI process and make it, you know, useful across a variety of different, different industries and with different tool sets um, to streamline multiple tasks. So me in my role, I'm the director of marketing here at Triple Helix. And I do a lot of content creation across multiple channels for us from social media management to email marketing to copywriting for our website. Um, and using AI has really been a great tool for me to kind of boost creativity and, and get some new and fresh ideas for some of the content that we're producing. So I know um, me and a lot of marketing professionals are using it to kind of brainstorm ideas for blog topics, for podcasts, um, you know, in an industry such as ours, where we're selling software solutions, there's only so many different ways that you can naturally phrase um, the products and services that we're offering our clients. So ChatGPT and similar tools like it really provide us the insight to kind of fine tune some of the dialogue we're putting out there and rephrase it in different ways that resonate with our audience. So it gives us new and fresh ideas. So the content that we're creating is not repetitive. Um, it's always new and exciting and really encouraging our audience to engage with us. And I utilize some of the tools like Pedro said, you know, ChatGPT is something I use day to day. Um, some of the other ones that are emerging, you know, we have a platform called getimage.ai and that's a text to image platform. So what that means is you kind of fine tune the prompt that you're giving this AI bot um, and you enter a text description such as, you know, for example, um, I want to see a white horse among a field of sunflowers just for a crazy off the wall example. And this chat bot, this, this image AI platform will actually take that description and it'll produce an image based on whatever text prompt I give it. So if I'm looking for a very specific image and I'm having a problem um, you know, sourcing stock imagery or custom content that we have to create what the visual I want to capture is, I can use platforms such as that to take my text and really bring that to life in an image form. And, and Lauren brought a good point too. Um, you know, another thing that is starting to, uh, is just beginning now is the apps, right? ChatGPT just launched the plugins, uh, which is sort of like a Apple marketplace for, uh, all sorts of, you know, software developer driven applications for uh, ChatGPT, which expands the power of ChatGPT. Uh, Expedia is now in there and you can search, uh, it, it probably connects to the Expedia API so you can search for flights and it can create the whole, uh, you know, trip itinerary for you, you know, and, and things of that sort. And the API for ChatGPT and the underlying technology that uh, allows developers to have that sort of communication uh, with APIs and 
you know, develop applications, it keeps evolving, you know, so uh, I, I think, you know, in the future, we're going to have a, a situation much like the App Store nowadays, but for AI, not only for ChatGPT, but also for BARD and all the other large uh, language models out there as well. That's actually a good point. Um, uh, wanted to ask you about automation and efficiency as you're talking about apps. I mean, what are we seeing out there as far as these apps actually creating automated uh, tools for us and basically helping improve our lives? Well, I mean, there's a whole plethora already of that, um, but there, you know, ChatGPT is making integrations with Zapier, for example, that allows you to automate uh, emails, social media postings, you know, all, so all sorts of things. I'm sure Lauren can attest to that. I'm not sure if we are using that already, but, um, you know, like I said, you know, travel, um, you know, news, uh, you can, you know, ping uh, news APIs and, you know, get the latest news and, and run summaries. Um, you know, even, you know, Riverside, which is the platform that we currently use to run our podcast, you know, they use uh, artificial intelligence to uh, caption all the videos as well. So, I mean, there's just, there's a whole array of, of things uh, as far as that goes. Um, one of the things too, you asked, you know, how it improves your life personally too. Um, so there's a lot of cool things that ChatGPT does outside of just a work productivity standpoint. My brother is very into fitness and health and constantly looking for ways to kind of eat healthier and, and have a more healthy lifestyle, but they're constantly looking for a way to afford that. It's very expensive nowadays to afford healthy food. So something he does with ChatGPT that I think is really cool is, you know, he'll say, I have a hundred dollar budget for the week. These are the ingredients I want to use in the meals that I'm creating. And he will go ahead and take, you know, those prompts, put it into chat GPT, tell it, you know, I have a hundred dollars. Here are the ingredients I want included in these meals. Can you make me a meal plan for the next seven days? And I know a lot of people that are using it for things like that, where it's pretty cool. It's pretty intuitive. It, it actually will give you within your budget, a healthy, choice of options that you can cook that, you know, if you want to make it, you're not a great cook and you want it to be easy, you can ask it for easier, simple recipes. And it'll give you a lot of really cool ideas to kind of make, you know, decisions like that in your personal life a whole lot easier and take a lot of work off your plate of having to do that research yourself. Yeah, I myself, instead of hiring a uh, personal trainer, I, I know that uh, ChatGPT is trained on the Arnold Schwarzenegger book for fitness. And so I just asked it to give me every day a uh, workout that I can do at the gym based on that book. And it gives me perfectly the workout every day. So that's pretty much what I follow every day to, to exercise. So instead of buying the book, I have that for, you know, free. So. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, how, how about communication, collaboration? I mean, that's something that, you know, here at Triple Helix, we're a remote company. And so we spend a lot of our time um, on Slack, uh, instant messaging, um, Zoom, of course. But how is AI evolving the collaboration communication space? So, um, yeah, I think, you know, one of the really cool AI tools that came out fairly recently is something called fireflies.ai. So in, on a work stance, I mean, we're constantly in Zoom meetings, whether it's internally or it's with a client and fireflies.ai is a platform that's utilized to streamline the process of taking notes. And it's something that I actually would like to incorporate more into Triple Helix. Um, you know, when we're on a call with a client, it, it can be very challenging for us to really make sure we're giving 100% of our attention to that client and hearing their needs and concerns while we're simultaneously trying to record everything that they're saying manually um, into a document or however we, we record it currently. And Fireflies.ai is a new platform that a lot of companies are starting to utilize that listens into those Zoom calls, or I believe you can even integrate it with other platforms such as Microsoft Teams, and it will actually take a lot of those notes for you. And I've seen a lot of companies do case studies on it where it is. It's, it's a pretty effective transcription service to make sure you're getting accurate notes while you're still able to give 100% of your attention to the client or to the internal meeting that you're having. Yeah, another another great tool right now that did a very good implementation of ChatGPT into their platform was Notion. Uh, Notion is typically used like so you can organize yourself and sort of tries to replace Excel and you know some of the other to tools for the office. But the, once they integrated ChatGPT, man, it became like a whole new platform. 
and people are really getting a lot of benefits from from having that type of integration into their you know workflow. Um, you know, from getting organized to just like Lauren said, you know, springing up ideas about you know content creation. And there's tools out there that even manage you know via AI even manage your calendar for you. So it finds uh, you know the spaces in your calendar and restructures you know your calendar in a way that as you complete tasks. Uh, it keeps shifting things so you can to make sure that you get everything done, you know, for the week. So it's just amazing, like the explosion of tools that are out there. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. So I'm I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about integration and adoption. So you know, we've talked a lot about how the, the AI tools are really changing the world. But you know, for our listeners who want to get started, what would you recommend? Uh, what what sort of like the first steps they can take to start dipping their toe in the water of this technology? Well, obviously, uh, going to ChatGPT, which is free, or Bard, or any of the uh, language models out there, and you know, starting to interact with it and see how they can implement, you know, on their day to day, uh, whether that be you know to just reply to a very complicated email, uh, or get you know blog post ideas, or uh, you know ideas about you know uh, company strategy or anything really. I mean, I had, uh, when I first started using ChatGPT, I used to uh, receive this email from this one company uh, every day. And I, you know, send them multiple emails asking them to stop sending the email. They added me to their list by mistake, you know, and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to receive those emails anymore. And they didn't have an unsubscribe button. They refused to take me off their list. So instead of hiring an attorney, I finally uh, had ChatGPT write a system assist letter. I put it on a nice piece of paper and I sent it to them and the email stopped. So, I mean, you know, you just got to get creative at some point, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when it comes to a lot of those platforms, like Pedro said, you know, it's really about dipping your toes into a variety of different platforms. There's so many AI platforms emerging every day. It's impossible to keep up. So start with some of the big ones like ChatGPT, um, really kind of learn about it and, and play around with it for your work life and your personal life. Um, see how you can utilize it best with your current workflow to kind of optimize things. And another tool that I like doing, you know, if I write a blog post myself and I write the copy, I'll take that copy and I'll plug it into ChatGPT and ask them to go ahead and rewrite it for me. And I can kind of compare and see, you know, what my original, my original copy looks like compared to ChatGPT and kind of fine tune things that way. It gives you a good idea as to how ChatGPT or another similar platform would phrase content that's already written. So that gets you more familiar with the platform, the way it talks, um, and allows you to really make sure you're more informed when you're utilizing a platform like that. Right, right. So, you know, as you're talking, I mean, there's a lot of differing technologies. It's kind of like the Wild West right now. But, you know, where where's the future of AI? What what comes next? What do you guys think about, you know, what we're going to start seeing here in our near and maybe, you know, distant future of AI? Absolutely. So, one, I mean, one of the things that I hear a lot being in the marketing realm is that a lot of marketing professionals are afraid that ChatGPT and similar AI platforms are going to replace them and their need for marketing within companies. Um, and I really encourage people not to look at AI as their enemy. I've seen a lot of marketing professionals go as extreme as to completely boycott it because they don't believe they want to show companies the value of AI. And I just don't, in my position, see that as a threat. I see AI as a really great collaboration tool. Um, like Pedro touched on previously, you know, it's not intended to replace a person. It takes a lot of training and fine tuning the prompts that you give it to get the output that you want from it. Um, it's not, you know, designed to really replace somebody. It's, it's designed to work alongside you. You have to really, it, it's almost an art. You have to really take time to learn the prompts and learn the information that you're giving it in order to get the content back that you want. So I encourage people, you know, don't look at it as a replacement. Look at it as how you can collaborate um, with it and how you can really enhance the role that you're in by using 
using AI. I think, you know, as far as the future goes, we're going to continue to see a lot of um, development as far as the strength of these AI platforms. I think they're going to continue to get stronger right now. Like Pedro touched on, a lot of the output that they give you can be kind of redundant over time. And it has a very specific tone um, that it kind of feeds back. So kind of getting away from that redundancy, you know, some more smart integration to get it more um, kind of t- talking in a more natural tone. I think it's going to continue the, the um, quality of the content that it produces, I think will continue to improve over time as people really learn more about these AI platforms um, and develop them accordingly. So I think they're here to stay. I'm really excited about them and excited to see where they go. But that's my big takeaway is I really want people to think of it as how it can enhance their life and improve the quality of their work, not replace them. Yeah, I think I think long term, uh, I agree with Lauren, and I think long term, essentially, what this is going to do is um, increase the skill level of everyone, right? People are going to be able to learn faster, learn better, uh, much like the internet provided to you know the, the modern world, right? Um, in short term, the people that adopt this early, that uh, understand that this is here to stay they're going to be a little better off than everyone, everybody else, you know, and it's going to come down to the individual to, um, you know, learn how to, how to deal with this new technology and how to uh, implement this on their day-to-day so that they're not left behind. That's a good point, Pedro, too, about, you know, making people more efficient in their roles. I mean, as a marketing director, I have so much stuff on my plate that I'm bouncing back and forth with day to day. So it helps me to streamline some of the more simple tasks, such as writing copy for social media or writing copy for a blog post and helps to streamline that. So we can look at the big picture stuff, right? Especially when you're working in an in-house marketing role, such as the role I have with Triple Helix, you know, we really want to spend a lot of time planning how we can, you know, do big picture stuff, how we can improve our ad campaigns, how we can improve, you know, engagement on, on social media. Media. So by taking some of those smaller um, tasks, such as writing copy and being able to kind of help uh, curate those with, with AI allows us to really have more time to allocate to some of that big picture stuff. Well, not only that, I also see a shift happening right now um, that instead of, you know, because people sort of know that like some of these uh, blog posts or content that is being generated by AI uh, sometimes there's a there's incentive not to promote those within the platform, right? And so uh, there's I see products springing up out there that uh, essentially collaborate with a human with you to write a unique piece of content in a way that is not fully AI, but it saves you time. So I think that that that's going to be a trend, you know, more so in the short future uh, because. You know, at some point, you know, ChatGPT is trained uh, all the way up to 2021, I believe. And obviously it keeps getting information every day. But at some point people, you know, are going to keep getting like sort of like the same standard information. I think, uh, you know, a while back somebody asked ChatGPT how many jokes he knew and he kept, you know, variating between 21 jokes. And so it probably is the same way you know, in a lot of other subjects. So it's very important to keep uh, ChatGPT in check or the language models in check, not only, you know, for accuracy, but also uh, for data privacy, right? And that's a very important topic nowadays as well, because all this information lives in those big corporate company servers. And so I think there's a real trend, um, you know, coming up where people are going to want to host those things themselves, right? Good feedback. Yep. So um, we've had a lot of interesting comments th- th- this uh, podcast and, and learned a lot and, and talked a lot about how this technology is changing us and, and our world. Um, I'm, before we wrap up, just want to give the two of you final thoughts, comments before we uh, give back this to our audience. Yeah, and I also think that what we're seeing right now is just the tip of the iceberg, right? And so um, I think what, what's ahead, it's going to completely change the way that we work, that we interact day to day with people. And that's not to say it's going to be all bad, that we're going to be replaced, uh, but there's going to be a lot of change, right? And there's going to be a lot of learning as well on our end to be able to adapt with this technology. So people are going to have to be very flexible with it as well. 
So just some final thoughts for me, you know, um, I feel like, you know, AI is very new. A lot of people are very intimidated, but a lot of people are very intimidated by it. I would encourage everybody, even if it's on a really small scale, um, you know, there is a new uh, chat GPT app, so you can use it on your mobile phone. Um, Snapchat even has an AI bot now, you know, pick up one of the easier tools like that, that are easy to understand and see, you know, start in your personal life, see how you can do things like come up with a fitness plan or come up with a meal plan and start using it on topics that you're very comfortable with segue into your work life, just start playing around with it and familiarizing yourself with the platforms. Like we've already said, technology is here to stay. AI is here to stay. The best thing that we can do is educate ourselves on it, become well-versed in it and see how we can utilize it in our personal and our professional life to really streamline our productivity and our operations. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, I agree with Lauren and, you know, on top of that, I think, um, you know, if you have a job, you should be looking at ways that you can implement that in, in your job um and use it to uh, increase your productivity but always keeping in mind your privacy as well and the data integrity and your client information as well so uh, work with it uh, try to implement but be cautious and just you know keep moving forward and learning sounds good well this is all the time we have for today so this has been the helix insider podcast i'm I uh, want to thank my guests, Lauren Gully, my director of marketing, and Pedro Lopez, uh, one of my developers, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.